This is the Poco F5 Pro disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass backplate. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. So you won't actually need to disassemble the phone to replace that. Now there are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. We can see some antenna lines drawn as top plastic cover, which are the light gray color lines. The NFC antenna is located over here. And the LED flash and back light sensor are located on this flex cable. This is a wireless charging coil, and there's a large area of graphite film to help transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. The battery cables can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. Here's a look at the 16 megapixel front facing camera. On the main board, there's a 64 megapixel primary camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The main camera is the only camera with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, and next to that is an infrared or IR blaster. There's also graphite film and copper tape over the front shields to help transfer heat. Looking at the back, we can see more copper tape on the back shields, as well as thermal paste to help transfer heat. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see additional thermal paste over the RAM, which is seated on top of the processor. There's some more graphite film over the speaker assembly to help transfer heat, and this bottom speaker assembly has the little white foam balls, which make it sound larger than it actually is. There's also a mesh filter over the speaker opening. 
The black coaxial cable is connected to an antenna board on the side of the speaker assembly. The screen cable cannot be disconnected from the subboard, the fingerprint scanner cable, in addition to the two other flex cables and the other end of the coaxial cable. So if you needed to replace the screen, you need to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and remove the speaker assembly, which should give you access to the screen cable. You then disconnect the screen cable and the rest of the cables on the subboard, remove the screw that's holding on the subboard, and then you'd remove the subboard itself, at which point you would remove the red rubber gasket by the screen cable, and then you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and you'd reassemble the phone. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding on the subboard. So looking at the subboard, we can see a red rubber gasket around the charger port and the primary microphone is located underneath the shield. The SIM reader is located on the other side. Once the subboard has been removed, we can see the x-axis vibrator motor which is located here and is held on with some adhesive and the same goes for the fingerprint sensor. If you need to replace either of those, you just apply some heat and gently pry them off. There's also a rubber gasket over the speaker opening on the frame as well as the microphone openings on either side. For anyone who's worried about puncturing the microphone or the filter for the microphone by placing the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you won't need to worry since both the filter for the microphone and the microphone itself are seated above the hole so it's like an L shape or a 90 degree turn. So the SIM ejector tool won't actually reach them to damage them. When it comes to removing the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 5160 milliamp hour battery. Once the adhesive pouch is peeled back, we have a better look at this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard. Once the flex cable has been peeled back, we have a better look at the vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard. The flex cable for the power button and volume key is located here, and if you need to replace that, you'd have to pull out this rubber gasket inside the frame, and then you'd be able to gently peel off that flex cable and pull it out of the frame. The proximity sensor board is located on the top over here, as well as the earpiece speaker which is located here and is held down with some adhesive. There are also two liquid damage indicator stickers on the frame, one of which is underneath the motherboard and the other one underneath the SIM reader. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. 
flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.